On the other side of the hospitality spectrum, some really spectacular uh, concepts uh, have been created. And one of them is uh, based out of Amsterdam. It's called Zoku. And it's merging co-living with co-working. And by doing that, it's targeting a totally different community. It's creating a community. And we have with us here uh, the co-founder and managing director of Zoku, Hans Meyer, who I would like to welcome to stage. Please give it up for Hans Meyer of Zoku. Hello everybody. Around 10 years ago, I found an interesting uh, piece of research where the researchers made pictures of hotel rooms of all the big brands. So Sheraton, Westin, uh, Golden Tulip, Holiday Inn. And then they asked the managers of those brands, so the hotel managers, to pinpoint their own hotel rooms. And which was pretty funny because they failed. So what it learned me at that time is that the majority of hotels basically became a kind of commodity where they only could compete on location and price. And as you cannot change location, you can still compete on price, but that's not a very uh, futuristic uh, scenario. That's the one thing. The second thing is that the way how we uh, develop hotels. So I've worked for uh, big hotel chains before, and what happens is that you get a kind of a floor plan and a building from an architect and a developer. And they will ask you, are you able to fit your brand into that? And I think you can imagine that you have to close a lot of compromises to actually fit your brand into a given building. So the guest experience is basically at the end of the spectrum. Now the thinking is, what would happen if you would reverse that entire process? So start with the target audience. They have a certain objective build the entire concept around, and only after that go to design a building. And the, la the last one is that in the hotel industry, it's quite common that you are getting more value if you pay more. So that's why we have the all the star rating system. But the interesting part is, are you able to create more value for consumers and at the same time decrease costs for them? So that's a kind of a, a paradox, and that means that you need to be smarter. So that's uh, a little bit the, uh, the, back, uh, the back story of what I would love to share with you today, because it's, it's not a full fleshy presentation, but it's more about the process, how we developed uh, Zoku. Zoku is a Japanese word for family, tribe, or clan. It was a subcultural phenomenon in Japan in the 1970s, where people with the same lifestyle started to live together. And we took a white sheet of paper with Zoku to forget everything what was there in the industry and created a new category. It's a hybrid between a home and an office, topped with hotel services, suitable for long stays, and the social bus of a thriving neighborhood. And we mainly focus with Zoku on people who need to live and work in a city between a few days, a few weeks, and even a few months. So the first thing what we did, and what is interesting to do that with every concept uh, you do, is actually to have a look at the world and how this is changing. And of course in hospitality, I mean the world is becoming smaller, but we, what we also learned is that more and more people, they work on project assignments. So the market of short-term assignments will grow until 2025 with 50%. If you look to the mobility of younger people, so 70% of the higher educated students in Europe, they want to work and live cross-borderly for a number of years. So that means that there's an amazing group of people that really wants to travel uh, uh, around the world and work at the same time. We previously discussed about sustainability. And sustainability is uh, it's not only for us about architecture or materials, but it's also the way of how we use space. Because, for example, if you look to office buildings, there are 8,700 hours per year on their location. 
But if you deduct all evenings, nights, weekends, and holidays, then they're only used a little bit more than 2,400 hours. Well, we all know Airbnb, we all know Uber, and they're all based on using unused capacity much smarter. And we also started to think about, can we create more hybrid spaces that you can use far more efficient than uh, is currently used and currently normal. Last but not least, urbanization. In 2050, 70% of the people will live into cities. So what you get is more and more densification. We also see that here in Amsterdam with rising real estate uh, prices. And the interesting part is, can we use space in a different way? Can we create more space on less square meters? And that was the third uh, challenge that we wanted to take on to, uh, create, uh, to create Zoku. Often it's about architecture, it's about furniture, it's about uh, design, but this is more about uh, people, because at the end of the day, uh, people are uh, actually the, the, the persons who are using the space. So one of the most challenging things we found out with Zoku is can you actually work together with your target audience to develop from scratch an entire new brand? So we worked together with 290 people from the target audience to get to the point where we are today. And the first thing uh, I did is to talk to 150 people from the target audience. So for example, Pascal, who worked in 35 countries in five years for Microsoft. I talked to expert managers, HR managers, mobility managers. I didn't ask them what they want, because often people, they don't know what they want, but they know exactly what frustrates them. And the biggest outcome of this piece of research was that if you go to a city that you don't know, where you don't speak the language, you don't know uh, a lot of people over there. The majority of the people, whether you're introvert or extrovert, doesn't matter. They told, they told me I start to feel, uh, to feel a little bit disconnected. And I start to miss my friends, my family, my dog, the food of my mother, what have you. And the interesting part about hotels is you bring uh, together a lot of people from different nationalities, backgrounds, cultures, but in a normal hotel, they hardly ever interact. So we felt, okay, we should do something uh, with that. And to work together with the target audience, we started to uh, do the entire process reverse. So the first thing, what we asked people is, what are you doing, ideally, into your room or into the public spaces? What are the things that you're looking for? And with those sessions, we first started to build up the entire customer journey to define what do we want people to see, feel, hear, smell, and whatever to basically tickle all their uh, senses. And it was a piece of paper of six meters long and one and a half meters high. So after that, uh, with all those touch points, we asked the copywriter to write a kind of a compelling story around it from a guest perspective. After that, we asked a visual, a visual marketeer, and with the help of Concrete in Amsterdam, where we designed this entire concept with, to help us with the, creating the right images. And over, after we designed the entire uh, storybook of a concept, then we started to really design the space. And the biggest advantage of that is that we all canalized the energy towards that single point where we actually were sure that we were able to satisfy our future uh, target audience. The next thing, what we learned is it's incredibly interesting to work with models. So we were able to acquire a building here in, uh, in Amsterdam. And after the initial uh, concepts, uh, definitions, and the checks which we did with the target audience, we started to build models and started to discuss them. And this is the model of the social spaces, where we ac uh, actually started to talk with our future target audience. OK, these are the kind of spaces we would like to design. These is, are the kind of experience you, you're go going to get based out of your research. What do you think about it? And we went through a lot of different design alterations, which finally resulted in the design of, uh, of Zoku. Um, if you go to Zoku in Amsterdam, which currently is our first, uh, still we call it a hotel, because you need to fit in a box, uh, we also reversed the way the hotel was built up. Normally you find the, lo the lobby and the social spaces on the ground floor. But uh, we are based in the uh, Weesperstraat here in Amsterdam, which won a prize for the ugliest street of Amsterdam five years ago. So we said, okay, maybe we should do that differently. And we decided to put all the social spaces on the roof together with a greenhouse, because we very much believe that daylight and lots of green help people to feel well. This is actually the space where you enter uh, Zoku. 
And this was also very much about design uh, uh, thinking, because what if people feel disconnected, you have to f facilitate connections within the space. And the only segment that gets that right in the hotel space are hostels. Can you imagine that you jump out of your bunk bed and you say, okay, I'm going to grab one cup of coffee, and two hours later you're still sitting on that big table with a lot of people that you uh, actually didn't meet before. So what we did here with Zoek, we took out all the traditional barriers you find in a normal hotel between employee and guest. So you don't find a big reception desk, you f don't find a closed-off bar, you don't find a restaurant where you actually never see a chef. We basically opened everything, like a friend's home, that you're allowed to go everywhere, and because of that you can always stand next to somebody. And by integrating these simple things in the design, we created a very informal atmosphere that actually helps uh, us to achieve that the borders between staff and employee are going to disappear. We have long-staying guests that when they go to the bar, they grab a few of the empty glasses to the bar because they start to behave that it feels like their own space. We also integrated a co-working concept within our social spaces. So on the long tables, uh, people actually who work there are members of, uh, of Zoku. We uh, didn't plan that from the beginning, but the place was so packed with lots of students bringing their homework and all their sandwiches and what have you, totally spoiling the, uh, the top floor atmosphere. So we started to build in those membership, but it actually works pretty well because we now integrated the co-working concept in the normal hotel model. So during the day, a lot of people, they go out to their offices and for the companies where they work for. A lot of people from the local neighborhood, they come there and work as an, uh, a freelance uh, professional. And at the end of the day, those two target audiences start to mingle, which makes it interesting for both of them. When we did uh, research about food and beverage in restaurants, you see that a lot of hotels, they want to simplify their food and beverage operation, because food and beverage is pretty complex if you would compare it to managing rooms. But there's one thing about F&B, that in every culture in the world, eating and drinking is the most social activity. And we felt, okay, if we want to do this properly, this concept, we have to create a space where people can share bread, cheese, and wine together, and that became our living kitchen. So still people are able to cook in their own apartments if they want to do that, but this is the place where people share food. And also we integrated there some co-working spaces at the back uh, of, uh, of Zoku where it's more quiet. So actually we want to give people the choice, do you want to work in a bustling bar? No problem. But also if you want to work more in silence and during the evenings you want to play ping pong, you can do that as well. Communities do don't happen from itself. We all know those multi-family uh, apartment buildings in the United States where they have a terrace and where they have a swimming pool and maybe a barbecue space, but nobody's there. And actually, a community needs to be nourished. We organize a lot of events in Zoku where people actually can come together. Every afternoon at 4 o'clock we have Fika, where people can, can get free cakes and coffee, and then they all mingle around the big tables to have a conversation with each other. Every week we have a community dinner for our long-staying guests for free, where they actually can meet a few people and that actually help them to ground into the city. So that makes design very functional. That was about the social spaces. And for the, uh, for the private spaces, we had a big challenge because we operate in the extended stay segment, so where people stay longer. And all the traditional operators, they use uh, one and a half to two rooms, so the space of one and a half to two rooms to create one kind of an apartment where you can stay for one or two months. Um, and that also results that all those concepts are always uh, located at the edges of the cities because it's just too expensive to have those big spaces in the middle of the city. So what we wanted to do is, are we able to create a hybrid, so between a home and an office, in the same space as a normal hotel room? Are we able to create more space in less square meters? And therefore, together with Concrete, we developed the Zoku Loft. And if you look to hotel rooms and studio apartments worldwide, in 99.9% .9 of those spaces, the bed is always the most dominant piece of furniture. And that's the reason why you never invite somebody into your personal space, because you don't want anybody to sit on your bed. So what we wanted to create here is a, a place where the kitchen table is paramount. That's a place where I can have a cappuccino on my own in the morning, I can have maybe a meeting during the day, and even a dinner in the evening with some friends that I already found within Zoku. So we created a kind of a flexible furniture system, 
where we're able to elevate the bed and where the expensive components, the bathroom and the kitchen are always the same and the rest we can play around with in order to be able to put this also in existing buildings which is far more sustainable as well. So we got two different alternatives. So this is one where you actually see the bed on top, the kitchen table and the couch. This is the side from the front. And this is the other alternative where the bed is shifted 90 degrees and the kitchen is uh, integrated in the corridor. Now we had those two small models. And you can uh, if you want to build a prototype for a hotel room, it can easily cost you between 50 and 100K. And Mark, uh, co-founder and myself, we are just small entrepreneurs. So we first, what we did, we went with those models to, again, the target audience to test them. Okay, would you like to stay in here? And we also went to the big companies like Microsoft and Accenture and Booking.com, for example. Would you accommodate your people in this kind of space? And after the first test and the validation rounds, we decided to build scale models out of it. So we rented a kind of a space uh, close to the harbor in, uh, in Amsterdam, very uh, cheap space with very cheap materials. We started to build those maquettes on a real life scale and started to test them uh, with uh, 100 to 150 people from the target audience per prototype. And also with those prototypes, there were two housekeeping companies involved to make sure that it's also be easily to maintain and easily to clean. And we didn't build one prototype, we built a total of six different prototypes where we had all those conversations and validation runs. And this was actually the fourth prototype where we started to use the final materials, more expensive materials, uh, although the majority is plywood, but still also the granite and the uh, stainless steel. And then we had the first one here in the north of Amsterdam, very close by to where we are today, which was, had actually the, uh, the materials over there. No shower, no running water, but still for us, easy to sleep over there and grab a shower the next day in the fitness school uh, close by. We also wanted to experiment with new technology. So how can, for example, data play a role in how you would design spaces? So in the last prototype, we uh, actually decided to uh, give people mobile EEG scanners and cameras where we actually could measure uh, two emotions, anxiety and excitement. And uh, I've got a small movie here where you actually see how that resulted in uh, small design changes. So she has ne never been in the room and she starts to find out, okay, how does this stair work? Here is still going quite okay. But then she wanted to go into the sleeping area and uh, tries to go in here first, then almost demolishes uh, the place. But finally, she's able to open up uh, the place and she starts to sit on the bed. Now, just as a kind of a funny uh, outcome of this experiment, we just added a small leather latch to the place where she started to pull and immediately people recognized that they have to put their finger in this small piece of leather and it worked out pretty good. Now, the difficulty with bringing a hotel concept into the market is that our target audience is globally. So, where are you going to put your money? Uh, we decided to make a small movie, and given the fact that in our space the bed was not the most dominant piece of furniture, we uh, made a small movie called The End of the Hotel Room as We Know It, and uh, I'm uh, happy to show it and share it with you. Welcome to Zoku, the end of the hotel room, the beginning of the infinite room, the workroom, the playroom, the come over to my place and make me smile room. The lay your head and launch your dreams room. Actually, this isn't even a room. It's one block of a thriving neighborhood, a hive of Zoku lofts and social spaces, designed for you to stay longer so you can go further. Meet, sleep, Work, dream, love, live, Zoku. So this is actually uh, the, the, the final result. And over the last uh, two and a half years since we opened in Amsterdam, we did a lot of testing with this, uh, with this, th this model. Um, and we actually were also very proud that we are, uh, were able to really continue the cooperation with our target audience because what we did over the last year 
is asking people, can we make pictures into the space while you are using it? So we found out, for example, that men are bringing much more shoes than we are, had anticipated. But it's actually very interesting to learn how people are actually using the space. Although we did all the validation before, it's, it still keeps on giving us lessons how we can improve the design. Now, this is the first Zoku. It's in the Weesverstraat here in Amsterdam. It used to be in a, a, a former office building from the, uh, from the 1960s. We totally uh, cleaned up the building. We have 133 keys on the right side, and we have the entire top floor. And the left side is, uh, is WeWork. Uh, it's actually the first WeWork uh, 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 lease that they had in, uh, in Europe, because at that time in 2012, we invited them to come over because we really wanted to create a kind of an ecosystem for the new economy where people actually could work and live at the same time. So it's very interesting how this works out in the entire building. And this is the, uh, the final result of working together with your uh, target audience. And it's always nicer to let other, other people do the talking. But the, the, the good thing about it is that in this era of internet, it's so fantastic how you can actually launch a concept and build a brand just by having a PR budget of 15,000 euros, which is in our industry almost nothing. And we're very proud that we were able to come this far with, uh, with Zoku. And actually, we are working on to bring Zoku to other places in the world as well. So Zoku Copenhagen and Zoku Vienna is being built, and we will focus on uh, building out Zoku in more cities in both Europe and the United States. Now, the interesting part is also when you keep on this, having these conversations with your target audience, you find out also other things. And what we found out over the last two and a half years is that a lot of people ac who actually stayed with us said, I want to live here. And it's not so strange because we all know this development around co-living, for example. Um, actually, what we found out is that we, uh, we built up a team one and a half years ago to really study the international residential market. And basically what we found out in the co-living world, there are basically two uh, uh, alternatives. One part of the spectrum, you get a small operators, eight rooms in the Bay Area, uh, close to San Francisco, very nice living room, but that's about it, and not a real business model. On the other side, you find the big co-living uh, operators, uh, really from a real estate perspective, spreadsheet guys we call them, putting as many people as they can on just a few square meters which we feel is also another sustainable model. Because the only reason why people are going to live in the latter is because they cannot afford to live themselves in another space. And we feel there's a huge opportunity here to do things uh, differently. And that's why we, uh, as Zoco, are going to into the uh, residential market as well. Because uh, almost every city, they struggle with an affordability gap. They struggle with the fact that single-person uh, single households are the fastest growing segment, and they struggle with the big problem around loneliness. So Theresa May, she, she installed last year in February a Minister of Loneliness, and we hosted uh, two weeks ago in Zoku an, uh, an event around getting loneliness out of a kind of a atmosphere of, t of, a, of a taboo, where we, just f where we found out also in Zoku that people who are able to communicate very well, very open people, are still uh, can feel pretty disconnected when they stay in a city they actually uh, don't know. Last but not least, I wanted to share with you uh, a video that we shot uh, within Zoku, where apart from uh, part of the story, we also asked people what they think about Zoku wh when they stayed here. Nothing was scripted, so actually you see the story that actually people gave. Amsterdam's an incredibly vibrant city. When I first got here, I stayed in a hotel and honestly, it was a lonely experience. We quickly looked for somewhere else to live and found Zoko, and it was a completely different experience. This is an inclusive package where you interact with everyone else who's here, and we're either working here for a short time, setting up a business here. The whole feeling is that you're part of something that's really fun and exciting. I was feeling really safe and comfortable and able to create and um, just, you know, develop, let's say, yeah. It was uh, something totally different from everything that I've seen over 14 years of working and traveling. I can tell my granddad about it. I can tell my future kids about it. Um, it's really special. I think Zoku is like one of those things. I really hope that Zoku is perceived as a place where we can bring people 
and ideas together. That people from different nationalities, different experience, different cultures, really find a place here where they learn to know each other, where they can work together and really push the world forward. Zoku really stretches the definition of a hotel into something new. It's a place where people share knowledge, ideas, bread, cheese and wine on a long communal table. We really wanted to do the research good. We really wanted to create something that is close to their hearts. It made me feel like I was part of something special. You know, something more than just me being a guest at a hotel. And there's always new people to meet and there's always the, the staff I could just hang out with because really they were like family to me after having stayed there for three months. I go upstairs and I'm greeted by friends every day. It's a wonderful feeling. And they know me, they know about my life, they care about what happens, they share their stories. Um, we've become intertwined. It's a great place to work, it's a great place to socialize and have fun. It helped me create connections that are important for me and I feel like they're just a big family. Now, hotels are basically places where you put heads in beds, that's about it. And we really want to develop a model which goes far beyond that. We really want to become better in making uh, people's lives easier and more fun and more fulfilling when they travel and work internationally. I think this entire concept should go global and will be a huge success globally. It's just about spreading the word. And that was about my story. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Thank you. Hans. Um, now, if, you, if you'll allow me to talk business with you for a couple of minutes. Sure, sure. Yeah? Uh, what is your average uh, occupancy rate? Our uh, average occupancy last year was 92%. That is very good, I think. That's, uh, uh, that's incredibly good. And you promised to offer more value at lower cost. Yeah. What's the average uh, price per night, per room? It, it depends a little bit on which period of the year you stay. So if you stay in April, you can uh, pay for one night uh, 220 euros. But if you stay, for example, in January, you can, and you stay for long stay, you go to 120, 125. So it really uh, depends on time of year, but also how long you stay. The, the longer you stay, the more you get out of it. 220 doesn't sound like lower cost to me. Well, if you would compare it with the rest of the industry, and if you get, we, we're still doing pretty well, but I also understand that 220 in Amsterdam is still a lot of money, but it's also because the rent prices in Amsterdam are also not very, uh, very cheap. So if you, if you still compare it with a lot of other apartments, then uh, apparently people perceive it as, uh, given it 92%, as still af as affordable. Value for money. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So the other thing I was interested in is that you have done, um, um, a big collaboration with um, potential users of the space, so you have them um, um, express their frustrations. What were their biggest frustrations? Well, the biggest frustration definitely was what I uh, briefly explained about feeling disconnected, feeling lonely. Uh, actually, that, that uh, working internationally is always perceived as being very cool, but at the end of the day, if you're there and you're sitting on your own in your space and you don't know anybody, it's not that cool anymore. And also, totally lack of functionality into, I mean, you cannot work pretty well into your space, you cannot personalize it, for example, it's, it's just a kind of a given. So all those uh, different things we integrated within Zoco, that you're able to personalize it, to choose whatever you uh, want, that you don't have to adapt yourself to the concept, but the concept adapts to you. Uh, these kind of things were always coming back in the research. And were the uh, potential end users really involved in the design process, or was that more something between you and concrete? No, uh, I mean, definitely Zoko and Concrete very, worked very closely together, mm -hmm. but we had a lot of validation sessions. So between the first prototype and the last one, we had around two years, and every prototype was tested with, with, with 100 and 150 people, mm -hmm. and all the feedback which we got back from those 150 people went uh, back into the, the, the next round together with mm -hmm. Concrete where we started to tweak all the changes. Mm -hmm. Looks like a very promising concept. Thank, Thank you for you sharing so with us. Thank you so much. Yeah.